In this video, I'll be explaining about one of the important feature in almost all the ETL projects, right? Uh, we will talk about the design aspect uh, from the database standpoint, and also we will look at uh, the talent job on how to implement um, the job auditing statistics and also capturing counts. On a high level, um, what this means is uh, in any uh, real time or um, you know enterprise projects you may have multiple um, jobs that load data from you know source to target so when you have like more than 100 um, or whatever number it is uh, when you have more number of jobs that are running uh, you should have some sort of framework that captures what time a particular sub job has started what time it has ended what was the status of the job and how many records were read how many records were written if there are any rejects uh, you capture that reject count as well right i have got a sample design here uh, which i'll be running through in a couple of seconds right um, i i want you to uh, pay attention and do not skip so that you uh, understand this complete um, you know the framework i'll i will also be uh, sharing the scripts sql scripts and also the job export uh, and the data file later um, so that uh, you can you know practice and you know improvise this particular you know version of the audit balance uh, and checks right so let's get started so first thing first uh, let's see uh, i'll be um, creating two tables here uh, first one is the properties so this properties uh, table will contain information such as the job id uh, what is the parent id of the job in case if you have uh, master and sub job related um, you know data loads so it will also capture the job name what uh, a particular job does what is the source for that particular job target and if there are any lookup you can capture that information also right so this is my properties table uh, I will share this uh, entire DDL so you don't have to worry uh, now, right? So I have specified some constraints and also uh, an auto increment so that um, you know the IDs or the keys will automatically increment uh, when when you run the job multiple times, right? So this is my properties table. Um, properties table is nothing but a definition table where I will capture all my the jobs in the entire projects right this is just a one-time activity you just create a definition and then uh, you have the second table which is called as execution table i'm calling it as jobs underscore execution so whenever you uh, run a particular job let's say you run it multiple times so there will be a entry created in this particular execution history right so the first one is a dimension table where you will just store the definition of uh, the job and the second job uh, sorry second table is the table uh, which contains the date um, at on what day a particular date and what time it has executed it will have the job id uh, from the properties table and along with that it will have uh, status whether a job is successful or not what time a job has started ended and uh, how many uh, records were read from source target how many records were committed in case of any lookups you can also capture the lookup counts and uh, in case of any rejects uh, you, you can also capture the reject count right i am making uh, the execution key as a primary key um, so that you can have um, you know surrogate key for this uh, history table so once these two uh, tables are created uh, on the database uh, you can actually make uh, some uh, dummy inserts. So I have got a job name. It's called as customer uh, data, right? J load customer data. So I am making one entry for this particular customer job into properties table, right? So similarly, you can store, um, you can use stores, payments, or you know, products, or whatever it is, right? You know, in in earlier uh, video, I have shared one uh, data file. You can use that data file and create um, you know jobs for those you know source right and then we will see how these table looks and then we will uh, move on to the job so for now let me go ahead and execute these scripts so i'm gonna just drop those uh, tables just to be sure right and then i'm going to create this table 
I have created the properties, I have created the execution and I will also make I will also uh, insert the definitions for our, the properties are table. All right, so let's see. Okay, looks like uh, it was already there. So what I'm going to do is I will probably um, redo this part. I'm going to drop this table and uh, recreate. Okay, so I have recreated table. So if you check uh, the properties right now, so there are no records in this um, properties table. So let me go ahead and insert. So let's see. I'm just gonna do control enter. So uh, the properties uh, table has got two entries now, right? One for the customer data load job and another for store data job. So let's see if there are any entries for execution table. Okay, execution table is now completely empty, right? So this is uh, my uh, setup on the database side. Now the table is ready. Let's move on and check the talent job. So in order to save some time, I have already develop this job uh, all it does is it creates a my mysql connection and uh, i have a data file uh, the customer data file which is also uh, i have uploaded on my website you can download and you know create this simple job uh, i'm using another um, file as uh, lookup right and then i have got two targets and if you notice uh, what i am um, trying to do here is i have a um, you know tmap which uh, with some criteria so that I can simulate the success scenario and also reject scenario. What I'm saying, if my uh, input data, the spending score, if it is greater than or uh, equal to 30, then I'm calling it as success. Okay. And if the, if the spending score is less than 30, I want to just reject those records. Right. So that uh, we can see um, uh, the records you know, flowing into the both targets. Okay, so this is my main target. Uh, the table name is stage customer data and this is called as error customer data. You can actually choose uh, if you are running the job for very first time, you may want to just uh, do a create table and uh, you can do that action on insert. Right, you can do, similarly do it for the other one also. So let me go ahead and um, run this job just to show you. So now it has made the connection. There are 200 records in the source and 200 in the lookup, right? Uh, out of that, the 154 records are having the spend score greater than or equal to 30 and remaining were actually rejected, right? So this is um, the counts, right? And also we don't know what time a particular job has started and ended. And also we don't know whether it is successful or not, right? Unless you go to uh, this log and check, uh, you will not know. So in order to uh, enable auditing and statistics, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use this particular table, which is execution. Right. So currently there are no entries in the job execution table. I am going to uh, make some small changes here uh, and then I'll show you how to um, you know, capture that. So the expectation now here is uh, whenever I run my job, right, uh, it should actually create one entry in the jobs execution uh, table, right? Whether it is succeeded or not, uh, you have to make an entry as soon as a job is started. So when you start a job, particular job, uh, the execution key and date key will be automatically captured and job ID uh, and then the start time, right? These two are uh, Im crucial in order to save uh, the start time right and when the job is completed uh, when it is succeeded uh, it should come back and update the job status along with the end time and the counts for source target lookup and reject right so the first step is as soon as the job is started it should populate uh, the first three uh, information along with the start time right so in order to uh, make that entry 
we will have to have um, um, uh, audit, uh, you know, capture audit stats uh, logic here. I'm going to uh, come back to this particular sub job. I've created this sub job uh, to actually create the connection and uh, make a new entry when a new job is started, right? Uh, and if it is already completed or successfully, it'll it'll go back and update, um, you know, that uh, audit entry. Right, so I, I will come back uh, to this particular job in a minute uh, to explain this better. But for now, just understand that there is an insert part happening and also an update part happening within this uh, particular sub job. So I'm using our Tiran job here and calling that particular, um, you know, this this particular sub job. And this is a reusable uh, code. You can uh, call it even for the start of the job, success or you know failure as well right uh, all we have to do is once you make the connection to the database you just call this particular you know uh, capture audit stat um, sub job and i'll quickly show you uh, there are a couple of things here um, in the properties uh, so there is a section uh, here which is called as context params right wherein you can actually pass all the required parameters and then the respective values right so i am i'm using the same column names right i'm i'm calling the same uh, uh, these are all uh, the context variables here right uh, i have i have a context group created actually let me show you that so here is the context variable uh, group so under that what i am um, doing is i am capturing all the job pids job name status start time end time you know all the source count target count uh, you can also uh, add more uh, variables and then use it later but for now uh, you will have to create one uh, context group uh, this is already explained in one of my previous videos so you can just uh, take a screenshot and uh, create this otherwise i'm going to share uh, this doc export anyways right um, so this is how you create uh, the context group and all all you have to do is just drag and drop onto this context area right um, so that way you have all the context uh, captured in this particular job so the next step is um, we will have to pass uh, certain things here um, so for these um, now we are making a new entry in the uh, execution table so for that uh, the job status should be always started right when a new job is started executing the status will be automatically just started and here I'm using a global variable it will automatically take the um, uh, job name and pass it on to the uh, execution history you know table right and all the counts i will be initially passing 0 0 and execution uh, i key is also 0 for now because when you start a new job you don't have any counts and also execution key right uh, you can also take a screenshot and make maybe make a comparison later but for now i am um, calling this particular um, sub job by passing some of the variables right with the start with the started uh, symbol variable value right i'm going to save my job and i'm going to run this job and if you see the there is there's also a message right this particular job has started and uh, let's see again 200 records uh, all those 200 records truncated and loaded <coughs> Now let's go back to the database and check if there is any entry or not. All right, so there is one entry, execution key, uh, and also the date key. It comes with uh, the month, year, month, day, and then the time and seconds also. So that if you run frequently, there will be a unique entry created. Right, the job ID is one, uh, which is our customer job. Right, and the st uh, status is started, and the start time is and so on so this is the current time uh, which i'll be doing it and since we have not implemented any success or failure case uh, this will be just one entry when you run the job again it's going to create another entry with only this many information right um, so that way uh, 
you keep uh, you know adding all the history historical execution now let's talk about uh, implementing the success and failure cases so for this again i'm using the exactly the same uh, sub job right um, i'm going to use the same uh, sub job and what i will do this time is i'll pass a different status for that right um, and and also we will pass some of the global variables so that we can capture all the counts right so let me uh, do it quickly okay so here is the same job i've just given a title called success and if you notice it's a start right i, I will show you the component uh, values i'm using the same uh, parameters here and uh, this time what i'm doing is the job status is succeeded so let's uh, do this and execution key i'm marking it as one uh, I'll, I'll be explaining in a minute why i'm making uh, zero for start and one for uh, success i will explain in a minute but in order to capture all the uh, counts from various component right you have a built-in uh, global variables uh, i will also show you how to get those names uh, when you go to this outline window so for each of the source and target you will have an entry here for example db output uh, one two where it is staging error similarly you have for lookup right uh, so when you expand this you will have a variable called as number of lines basically what it does is it, it gives us the number of records that it has processed from this particular component right um, in order to if you want to you know, capture that automatically what you could do is um, you can just put a tjava component and uh, inside this you can just drag and drop right when you do this you get this particular variable name so similarly uh, you can do the same thing for the error count you can actually get the number of lines from the error instance like this so i have already taken this uh, variable names and then sticked on to um, you know the um, parameter section here right the my source count is coming from input delimited uh, one and lookup is three and uh, reject and target is you know two and one respectively right so this will take care of uh, capturing the count information and um, you know pass it to the sub job which will go ahead and uh, do the insert into uh, the final table and it is uh, since it is a success uh, what i am going to do is i will use on sub job ok and then connect it to this and similarly uh, i have copied uh, the same uh, sub job again and here if you see uh, the status the job status is failed and when the job is failed uh, we don't have any uh, count right you know it's not successful we don't want to give uh, half cooked information in this count column so uh, all i'm changing is the status is failed and all the counts uh, will be reset to zero so that uh, you can reprocess the job later after you fix the issue so let's go ahead and uh, use on sub job error and then connect to this particular sub job i'm going to save my job and let's go ahead and run this particular job okay so the audit capture has started and there is another entry called succeeded and the same 200 records completed uh, successfully and if you see this okay it has gone to success flag let's go back to our talent um, sorry the execution table let's go ahead and check okay so this is the second entry right the execution key here is 2 and so on so date and it is succeeded uh, start time and end time is captured uh, along with that source count 200 target lookup and reject count right so this is the success scenario now let's uh, simulate a failure scenario by you know just providing uh, some wrong um, you know table name here okay i'm gonna save this job and run it now you see uh, whether or not my uh, sub job is completed or not i'm creating a um, 
what you call uh, the entry uh, in our execution table right so this particular job has failed and it says uh, this particular table does not exist which is you know on purpose now if you see the error is captured and uh, the expectation is the execution have another entry here with the failed entry so let's go ahead and check it okay so there's a third entry and the status is failed and is the start time end time right and uh, there are no accounts so in order to um, you know make this even better what you can do is uh, I know this is very basic structure you can add uh, the error message uh, and also you can have a check checksum you can see you can probably do some sum uh, where source equals to target plus uh, reject equals uh, will be the source count right you can do uh, several other ways you can extend this particular table have more information logged into this right and um, you know uh, build your uh, audit framework and make sure you make it um, you know uh, reusable as much as possible and just call it just for the start point success and then the failure point right so we have understood how uh, the entries are done uh, for all the scenarios now let's uh, go ahead and check this particular jobs right in a sub job where it is doing this insert and also update on what basis it is doing right so let's go ahead and check that part so all I'm doing is I'm creating a, a connection a database connection and I'm just printing uh, the job name and then the status right and here uh, this is very important point so we have seen uh, two cases right when is uh, a new job is started execution so when, when a new execution is started you will have to make an entry so the if condition here is execution key is zero you remember we gave uh, execution key um, here as uh, zero right this is how it will ex uh, understand this is a new entry right whereas in uh, success or in a failure case the execution key is one right this is how i'm making the decision whether to make a new entry or to update an existing entry right so based on that i have uh, just a simple insert statement into this particular table for all these uh, required columns right i am using uh, the context variables so that um, you know it just gets gets the exact uh, job uh, you know id and goes and creates a new entry right i'm gonna i'm gonna share this complete job export so you can um, you know check this uh, ddls and dml so don't worry and the second part is um, so uh, as you can see in the very first entry right we had only this much when a job is started we'll have only this entry when uh, you have multiple jobs you will have to go back and update only the job that has uh, with the latest execution key for a particular job right so in order to go back to that particular entry and update what i'm uh, doing here is i'm getting the max date key sorry max execution key for that particular job which we have just run right uh, so it's going to pick up only one uh, entry which is the latest entry for a particular job and it will take that entry it will um, assign this execution key um, which in case let's say if you run the job again the execution will be 4 right and uh, when it succeeds it will come to this point and it sets the execution key as 3 and in the final update we will uh, be updating the execution table uh, with the appropriate status and uh, all the required counts right so this is how update will work um, for uh, the success or you know failure scenario i hope this is clear uh, if, if you have any questions you know write down uh, in the comment box below i will sh i will try to share my um, you know input files and the job export in um, in the description below uh, after some time um, but yeah uh, this is all about uh, designing and implementing your auditing and statistics um, framework thank you for watching and happy learning thank you